Hello, my name is Nathan, and you're watching the Unlocking Data in SCM channel. Today, I'm going to talk about how you can model a maritime consolidation program for an inbound transportation network right after this. Most supply chain decisions are some strategic balance between cost and some measure of service. But if you don't have visibility into what those cost versus service trade-offs are, it can be really difficult to actually make those decisions. Simulations can be really helpful tools because they help you quantify what those cost versus service trade-offs are. So let's dive a little deeper into simulating ocean consolidation programs. To be precise about the terminology here, consolidation usually refers to combining shipments from multiple shippers at an origin port over some consolidation period to more effectively utilize containers and ultimately to keep things efficient and maximize savings in an inbound or other ocean transportation network. But consolidation can, in the more general sense, mean to just increase holding periods so that containers are more well utilized and shipment frequencies are not too high. So in either case, the same modeling concepts do apply. So that's what I'm about to show you as we dive deeper into this dashboard. So in this network, we have multiple origin ports in Asia, shipping to two destinations in the US, one in Chicago and one in Seattle. In this view, you'll see how many of each container size is moving over the modeling timeline. And in this view, you can see what that modeling timeline is. For this network in the baseline, there was a total freight spend of about 1 million bucks. And that's gonna decrease as we increase consolidation period so that containers are more well utilized and shipment counts are reduced. So let's see how that plays out with one of the big lanes here. So if we look at this big lane here from Sh Shanghai to Chicago, in the baseline, there was a total transportation spend of about 350,000 bucks. But if we increase consolidation period, to two times a week, then that transportation cost drops from around a little over 345,000 to almost 320,000. So just by changing the consolidation period from the daily in the baseline to twice a week, we can save 25,000 bucks over the modeling timeline for this big lane right here. If we increase that consolidation period to weekly, then the freight cost goes down to 303,000. And if we increase to two weeks, it goes down all the way to 273,000. So as you can see, when I increase the consolidation period, then less LCL shipments are flowing and more larger containers are used. Um, so in this two weeks case for this big lane, almost about 79% of the CBMs are flowing via 45 foot containers, which is the largest container in this modeling exercise. So let's see what happens for 
all of the lanes when we increase the consolidation period. So if we implement biweekly consolidation at all the lanes, then the total network cost drops from almost a million to around 906,000. So almost 10% in the network just by implementing it across the board two times a week consolidation policy. If that policy is increased to weekly, that transportation spend drops to 870,000. And if we implement two weeks across the board, it drops to 820,000. So that's more than 15% cost savings by implementing a two week consolidation period policy across the board on all of these lanes. A couple of qualifications for this. I haven't included any consolidation fees, which if you're just increasing the holding periods yourself, you won't have to pay consolidation fees to a third party. But if these the volumes in these lanes are coming from multiple shippers and you're having a third party do the consolidation for you, you might have to pay consolidation fees, which will increase the cost. And it's possible that those fees might wipe out any savings that you uncover by implementing the consolidation periods. But using these modeling exercises can help you determine what is going to be the most optimal in your supply chain's case. Another word of caution, as you increase the consolidation period, you are your destinations are going to have to wait longer to receive shipments since they're not receiving shipments as frequently. So this has to be done in conjunction with careful demand analysis to make sure that you're still planning to uh, replenish your distribution centers at rates that will meet your demand. But in summary, that's how you can use simulation models in dashboards to quantify the cost versus service trade-offs for a maritime freight consolidation program. I'm going to include a link to this dashboard in the description here. So if you want to click around on this dashboard, just go to that link in the description and you'll be able to find it. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any other questions related to logistics modeling or supply chain data vi visualization, make sure to let me know in the comments. Goodbye for now.